This is the story of a visit to one of Britain's far-flung island colonies, Antigua, one of the most northerly islands of the Leeward group. Here is a tiny island of great charm and rich in the history of the British Commonwealth. At the end of the deep sheltered bay lies the island capital, St. John. Its dominating architectural feature is the old cathedral, which stands prominently above the town. This old stone building, surrounded by its historic graveyard, has a richly timbered interior. From the cathedral steps, you look down one of the main streets, which runs to the waterfront. Nearby is the courthouse, typical of the colonial architecture of its period. St. John's is a small, well-laid-out town, most of the streets running parallel to one another. Almost every day, there is a colourful street market. Here, the native people, for the most part descendants of old slave times, gather to gossip and make their purchases a busy and colourful scene. St. John's is typical of most towns in the British islands of the Caribbean area. There is little of architectural greatness about them. For the most part, houses, shops and public buildings have been built more for utility than for decorative effect. The Negro population can scarcely be termed industrious. Nevertheless, they are skillful in many handicrafts, such as the exquisite beadwork, which is reminiscent of the African origin of these peoples. The island enjoys a healthy tourist trade, and where tourists gather, so must there be souvenirs for them to buy. The people of Antigua are not backward in meeting this demand, and a wide degree of originality is displayed in their work, much of which is made from shells and other natural materials. In order to encourage the development of local handicrafts, an organization has been formed to teach the young native girls the art of hand weaving. They work with local materials and make a wide variety of useful articles which find a ready demand both with residents and visitors. This little island, only about 108 square miles in area, possesses a wealth of scenery. On the south side of the island, a country road takes the visitor to one of the most historic places in the whole of the British Commonwealth, English Harbour. This harbour is now no longer used, but in the 1700s it played an important part in naval history. The ruins of the old dockyard are now preserved by a society called the Friends of English Harbour. Nelson first anchored in English Harbour in 1784, and for the next three years, Antigua was his headquarters. His house is now a museum. One of the most impressive buildings of the old dockyard is the naval officer's quarters, built over an enormous water system. Nearby are the ruins of the old dockyard buildings and slipways on which many a famous ship of the line has stood bearing such famous names as Vanguard, Repulse and Cornwallis. The site of the old capstan house is now reduced to a low wall. The capstans have recently been remounted by the company of a visiting ship of the Royal Navy. 
Anchors of old and famous ships reflect the greatness of British naval history. On the hills which surround English Harbour, there are many interesting ruins of the old military barracks of bygone days. Here again are monuments to the past glories of our military history. Today, Antigua's economy depends upon her agricultural assets. The island is fertile, vast acres of sugarcane cover the landscape. In the days of slavery, the mills were driven by wind power. Today, the scene has changed. The people are all free. The past evil days of slavery are buried. Modern mills and modern methods have taken the place of the old. On the big estates, mechanical methods of transport have been introduced. Diesel or steam trains bring the cane to a fine, up-to-date factory. On arrival, the trucks are automatically tipped up and emptied. The cut cane is carried by a moving conveyor into the grinding mill. These sugar mills employ immensely heavy machinery. As the conveyor brings the cane into the mill, it disposes of it into powerful crushing machinery in which the juice is extracted. Sugar is not Antigua's only important crop. Wide acres of land are devoted to cotton. As in the east, so in the west, the cotton is picked by hand. And as they pick, they place the cotton in large bags which they carry around their waists. When the bag is full, it is emptied into a sack and measured accordingly. The picked cotton is spread out on large tarpaulins in the hot tropical sun to dry and to bleach. This process takes only a matter of an hour or so, and when the cotton is dry, the tarpaulins are folded over so as to gather their fleecy burden into ridges or rows, thus making it easy to gather up and to load into baskets in which it is carried into the sheds. Every ball of cotton contains little black seeds. These have to be removed by hand before the cotton can pass onto the mill. This work is done in the plantation sheds. In the capital town of St. John's, there is a cotton ginning mill. Here, the cotton from the plantations passes through a teasing and combing process, after which it is ready to be baled and shipped. Antigua cotton is known as Sea Island cotton and is of the very finest quality. In the West Indies of recent years, there has developed a unique and extraordinary form of music played by orchestras known as steel bands. The band instruments are made from discarded oil drums. The drums are cut into pans of varying depth. Some drums are shallow, others deep, depending upon whether they are required to make bass or alto instruments. The steel pans are heated over a fire. After they have attained the required temperature, they are tempered with water. Then they are hammered into the required shape. Next, the bottom of the pan is marked off in chalk into a number of sectors all of which have been worked out by experience, which is perhaps a nice way of saying by trial and error. The marked out quarters are punched, hammered and chiseled along each line of the pattern. Every band has its own distinctive colors and designs. These are painted uniformly on each and every band instrument.
Every pan is tuned in a most accurate manner by gentle hammering and denting. When the work is finished, a sling is attached to each instrument so that it can be carried over the shoulders and held in position. The music of these steel drum bands is of a tone and quality which has to be heard to be believed. The West Indian Negro, after many generations, still retains the inherent qualities of his ancestors. Never is this more clearly demonstrated than in their carnival dances and celebrations, which can, if one cares to study the question, be traced back to some primitive tribal dance of his ancestors in Africa. In Antigua, this takes place in the masked whip dance, which the people perform in the streets with an almost primitive frenzy. The whole thing is indeed colourful and impressive to watch. The little island of Antigua has become an exclusive tourist paradise. Its rich variety of scenery, reasonably temperate climate and not too distant position are factors which have made it popular with the people of the North American continent. On the northeast side of the island there are wonderful bays and beaches where a colony of American people have established a residential area.
a splendid clubhouse serves this community. The wealth of tropical flowers and vegetation is amply displayed in the charming courtyards of these vacation homes. Antigua is no overdeveloped tourist resort. In fact, despite its invasion by people from other lands, it remains unspoiled and the people of the island are determined to preserve all its natural assets. That is, in fact, Antigua's greatest charm. The beaches have nothing artificial about them. Here, the visitor can sunbathe the whole day long, and the blue waters offer all that the angler could possibly desire. The modern craze for goggle fishing has, however, reached Antigua. For those who indulge in this exciting form of sport, there are ample rewards, because the waters round the island abound in splendid crayfish. Time passes quickly in this tropical paradise, and all too soon you must once more join your ship lying far out in the bay. A fast launch takes the visitors from shore to ship, and all who visit Antigua as they sail with the setting sun must surely look back towards the little island with many a fond memory.